All right, what's poppin' everybody, and welcome back to another Halo Infinite video. Today, we are checking out some more Halo Infinite information. There was yet another blog post released on Halo Infinite. Uh, as usual, I'm a couple days late to this uh, because I suck at being on time to things. Uh, but we're gonna go and check this out. This blog post contains some additional information uh, about the multiplayer overview and stuff that we saw, uh, and some additional details and stuff, some map names, uh, stuff about the armor that we haven't seen yet or that wasn't discussed, like I said, in the multiplayer overview video. If you guys haven't seen that or don't know what I'm talking about, uh, there was the multiplayer reveal as well as the multiplayer overview, two different sort of trailers that we got, and this is the reveal trailer, and I think uh, they have, yeah, this is the overview down here. Uh, they have them linked on the blog post. Uh, but also, I've done reaction videos to those two things. If you guys haven't seen those, go check them out. They're on the channel. Uh, they're some of the last couple of videos on the channel, uh, which you should be able to find fairly easily. It's very exciting to finally be getting this stuff and getting, you know, this little bit of information and details and, you know, gameplay and stuff and being able to finally see some of this stuff. Very exciting. So like I said, uh, with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into uh, some more of the blog post today. It's called... Uh, Showcase sensitive. We got some more stuff, um, and essentially uh, additional information, uh, key highlights, free to play, uh, new gameplay gadgets, and stuff like that. Um, I figure a lot of people that are watching this probably don't read the blog post super heavily, or if you do, maybe you're looking for like a second opinion. Uh, I, I know a lot of news people do videos on this, as well as Cole uh, did a video on this uh, a couple days ago, which we talked about. Um, but, so this right here, Spartan, uh, Agrina? I hope I said that right. If I butchered that shit, let me know. Lauren Agrina? Um, Spartan Academy Commander. So this, I guess, uh, this lady right here is going to be the, uh, person in charge of, uh, I guess in charge of you during the gameplay portion of the Academy and stuff, which, uh, if you guys don't know what the Academy is, essentially, uh, there's more about it right here. A uh, program gives you the platform to hone your skills against fellow recruits and learn how to maximize uh, new tools at your disposal. Essentially, it's like a crash course tutorial uh, beginner mode thing so that if you are new to Halo, um, you can sort of jump in and practice with uh, other fellow recruits, other new players, uh, and sort of get better that way in a little bit more of a low pressure environment instead of just jumping in multiplayer because I know that can be a very daunting thing especially in Halo. Halo uh, is one of those games that has a very steep learning curve um, and, and can be very uh, you know I mentioned it in I, I think I mentioned it in the multiplayer overview video but I'm sure there's uh, plenty of people who jumped into Halo 5 um, and maybe jumped into quick play or Slayer or Team Arena and got a very sweaty match and uh, you know right off the bat had to play against people that were trying very hard and that were already used to the game and whatever and maybe uh, they were turned off by that so that's very uh, definitely a very good inclusion um, which I was very excited to see uh, so down here we've got uh, some more stuff about the armor uh, and if I can remember as well I'm gonna have links in the description uh, I'm gonna have a link to the blog post definitely but if I can remember I'll try to have links for the reveal and the overview as well just in case you guys haven't seen it I'm sure you guys have uh, but we've got more stuff uh, down here about the armor. Uh, we've got the aviator, which is this guy right here. Uh, and he's got something. I don't know if that's the actual visor or like, I don't know if that pattern is the visor or the visor from that helmet. I don't know exactly how much customization is involved in that. But just looking at, uh, at all this armor, I'm not going to go super in depth about all this stuff because I'm not really like... I mean, I, I'm, I'm not like a lore guy. I can't tell you about uh, all this different stuff. Like, all this is like you know, different lore, uh, you know, details and stuff, what it means like in universe and stuff like that. I'm not great when it comes to that to that kind of stuff. But just like looking at the art style, and I know that like, like this in particular, uh, the weapon coatings I think is a really cool thing. Uh, just giving you additional options to be able to express yourself. Um, one of the things we talked about on the most recent episode of the Wavelengths podcast where we discussed our thoughts on infinite and we go into depth on a lot of things about the infinite reveal and the multiplayer overview so i'm gonna leave a link in the description to that as well if you guys haven't seen that it's a podcast i do with proximity and samaritan uh it's very good we talk about a whole bunch of infinite stuff and like i said we go into detail on a bunch of this stuff so it's some good listening uh if you are interested in halo infinite but uh this looks very uh or but sorry the point that i was making before i move on to this uh one of the things we talked about a lot was that options are are good. Like options can only mean good things. So like uh, the more options you have, the more 
essentially the more customization options you have, the more yours your Spartan can be, and the more options for individuality, you know? Uh, I, for one, was a huge fan of the Reach customization, and so to see what we got in Halo 5 was a little bit of a disappointment. That was a little bit of a step back, only being able to customize your helmet and your body piece and then your visor. Uh, that was a little bit of a letdown. So seeing weapon coatings now, as well as uh, there have been a lot of, uh, there were the Xbox screenshots uh, of sort of the customization menu, as well as some of the stuff in the videos. Uh, being able to have all those options sort of like reach um, and, and to be able to make your Spartan truly your own is going to be super sick. Uh, and, and going along with that as well, the not having the red, uh, the red and blue and, and sort of and only having the red outlines in matchmaking. Uh, th that's another thing that I'm looking forward to. Um, so they've also got a cosplay guide right here, which is cool uh, if you guys are interested in cosplay. But just looking at all this stuff and like, look, there's a skin on the sniper. I mean, just looking at this, everything, the prosthetics, which they mentioned, um, which are back for the first time since Reach. And this is very, so one thing I did want to mention is a lot of people seem to have a problem with, um, or maybe they didn't have a problem, you know, Halo community, like people are always going to find faults with, with everything, you know, and, and obviously it's very uh, divisive and people are going to have different opinions on the direction they want things to go. Um, but this art style uh, is very similar, very, uh, I mean, it, it all feels very Halo 3, Halo Reach. Especially looking at like this screenshot right here, um, and, and, and these... Like this all, this feels very Halo 3, Halo Reach, which I personally think is a logical progression of the art style. I think this looks, and definitely like in, in this one right here, this is a mixture of like, this looks like Halo 5, um, almost. But people seem to have a problem with that, but I don't know, I, I thought that was a little bit of, of a weird complaint myself, because this seems like a logical progression of Halo's art style, and uh, you know, conversely, when you have Halo 5 that seems very sort of uh, cartoony and bright colors and, and things like that in Halo 4 as well, this seems very much like a return to uh, the roots with Halo. And so I think this stuff all looks great. I don't know, let me know uh, how y'all are feeling about all that and let me know if y'all agree or disagree uh, with that as well. I'm definitely curious to see how y'all are feeling about this. But just the look at this game, like I, as somebody who uh, has been playing Halo since I was a little ass kid, uh, you know, I've played all the games, the Bungie games, the 343 games, whatever. I think this is great. I think this is, you know, it's it seems newer and, you know, we've got some additional armor types and, you know, weapon coatings and things we haven't seen in the game before. So some newer things while also uh, seeming faithful to uh, the, the source material and, you know, the older titles and, and all that stuff. I don't know. I, I've just every everything about the way the game looks so far. I really, really enjoy and and obviously the additional customization things, you know, we've got some new armor and helmets and things that we haven't seen uh, before, and additional customization options uh, with the prosthetics and, you know, the skins on the guns, everything. It's just more options for the player, which I've already said, nothing but good things. I love it. I love it. It's all good stuff. But here we've got uh, a little bit of a spotlight on some of the new guns, some of the new weapons we haven't seen. Um, the first of which being the skewer. This is, uh, we got a little bit of a shot of this uh, in the multiplayer overview of this thing taking out a warthog. Uh, and it is a, so it's a brute weapon, which makes sense. And, and definitely we saw a lot of, I know there's a chopper in the trailer. A lot of the, I, I'm, I'm glad to see a lot of the brute stuff come back. Brute's definitely a lot of fun to uh, fight against. And obviously being part of the banish, that's gonna be part of the main thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that 343 added a bunch of cool guns and sort of improved upon them uh, for the Covenant. Like, there's a lot of different cool Covenant guns and variations that made it into Halo 5 and different things. Just like, if y'all can even remember, like, one of the Warzone variants of the Carbine was like a Carbine that shot needles and was like fully auto. Like, that was so cool. Um, and just, I, I know this isn't, this isn't really a similar thing, you know, it doesn't really have anything to do with Warzone, but just sort of conversely, being able to see, like, cool and different, like, brute weapons is going to be really cool, uh, for the game. And then here we have the Commando, which is the, uh, I don't know if this is fully auto or if it's burst, I don't know. Um, this is the new, uh, human UNSC gun that we have seen a little bit, 
Uh, we also saw this in the initial campaign gameplay trailer like a year ago. Uh, so this is now the updated version of it, and I think uh, I think this gun really really looks cool, and I'm very curious to uh, to, to get my hands on it and see uh, see and use it because uh, I'm always curious in, in new guns uh, about new guns. Excuse me. Um, I'm definitely curious to see how that plays, and I'm also curious to see as well if that is a competitive weapon or not, uh, because just I don't feel like I saw enough of this weapon in the gameplay um, that we were shown to really judge uh, if this is going to be like an AR type deal, or if this can get away with being a precision weapon, or if like, like I, I definitely want to see this more, um, because I think I, I think uh, uh, like, like variety in the competitive mode for Halo would be cool and seeing different guns in competitive would be cool but I think it would have to be suited for that you know uh, I, I don't think it could be a thing like with Halo 5 where they just tried to mesh the casual and competitive modes and like here's some ARs and some storm rifles and ground pound and stuff um, obviously not being the same for this game but hopefully uh, hopefully this gun's cool and down here we've got uh, We've got to look at the uh, vehicles. Uh, I don't really upload a whole lot of big team stuff uh, because I wasn't really super into Halo 5's big team, uh, especially post BR nerf. But historically, I've been a huge big team fan, and so one of the things, uh, sort of low key, I'm hoping for in Infinite is that big team slaps. And it seems like there was a little bit of focus on that. Uh, if you guys saw throughout uh, all the trailers and everything that we've seen from Infinite, there has been no mention of Warzone. It's been strictly big team, back to the roots, good stuff. I think uh, I think it's 12v12 now, so that's they're really going all in on like, we're going to do the big team thing, which I think is cool. Um, but here we've got to look at the Banshee. Uh, all this stuff is a little bit more... Um, so it's all red. You can see it's all... This is all banished, like, sort of branded stuff so it's all got a new look and it's all sort of red accents and stuff like this and it's all because it's brute it's all everything seems a little hev hev a little more heavily armored which uh which i think is pretty cool i think all this stuff looks uh looks very cool you can see the ghost down here too um so i'm curious to see as well because i think we've only seen brute things um i'm curious to see other variations of these vehicles whether or not they're gonna in multiplayer like obviously i don't know what the deal is i'm sure we're still fighting uh elites in some form or fashion uh unless i'm absolutely tripping like i said i'm not a lore guy so correct me if i'm wrong uh so i'm curious to see if there's also like there's going to be different versions and variations of these vehicles uh and, and maybe we're just seeing the brute ones here um i'm sure there will be but uh we'll have to see so down here we've got another wasp which is cool so uh I guess confirmation that the wasp is coming back. We saw one of these things get uh, grapple jacked, which uh, was super sick. I, I cannot wait to be grapple jacking people in Infinite. You can uh, you you can see me swinging like Spider Man from the skies with that thing. Uh, but yeah, I'm also curious to see if they're going because you got to think they didn't show us everything. So I'm curious to see if we get any other flying UNSC vehicles. I am a uh, I was a huge fan of the Falcon in Reach, and so I'm lightweight, like lightweight, low key hoping that maybe there's more flyable vehicles in the final game. But we'll have to see. Uh, Wasp is looking cool though. I was a big fan of the Wasp from Halo 5. Um, I'm just a big fan of flying vehicles in general, man. I can't lie. Down here we got the Razorback. This is where it gets this is where it gets interesting. Um, the Razorback, which is essentially Warthog without I don't know if it's I don't know if all versions are without the turret, but uh, it's without the turret and it's got a trunk on it. You can put shit in the trunk, bro. They were saying you could put a fusion coil back there, you could put guns back there, turrets, like I don't know, man. You can literally pop the trunk on somebody's bitch ass with the Razorback, and I cannot be more excited for that. Like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of the big team in Halo 5, but just based off of what I've seen from this so far, it's looking super cool. This is what I am very curious about, is the personal, personal AI. One thing you may have noticed in various multiplayer gameplay shots is the presence of a personal artificial intelligence unit. For obvious reasons, only natural to expect the UNSC or anyone really to be reticent. I hope I said that word right. My, my vocabulary is absolutely ass cheeks. When it comes to any sort of interaction with AI given recent events. That being said, the reality is that these constructs in various forms remain undeniably integral to a large portion of the foundational systems in place for 26th century life. Blah, 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 blah. 
Um, rudimentary constructs tailored to a variety of specializations. One of the available constructs. Cool. So, this is personal AI, which, to my understanding, is like you can pick your own sort of sort of the way you could pick your announcer in Halo 5, but. Uh, they said the announcer, which the main Halo announcer, Jeff Steitzer guy, is going to be like, is everybody's going to have him, and he's going to announce the main things like scores, updates, and, and you know objectives and stuff like that. But your personal AI is going to give you more fine-tuned information, uh, more stuff that's personal for you, um, maybe letting you know that power weapons are coming up or, or something or other. Uh, so essentially, uh, your own personal thing, which... They said they will be there will be a number of different ones, one of which is Lumu right here. So I don't know if I don't know if that's gonna be like different just different voices, or maybe they'll have different attitudes, like one will be a little bit more snarky and funny, and one might be a little bit more professional and you know, different accents. I don't know. I'm very curious to see. Uh if I could have my own Jarvis running around the battlefield of Halo Infinite, I think that would be pretty tight. Uh so yeah. And then down here at the bottom, we have uh, some maps as well as some map names. So we finally have some names to put to these maps that we saw in the multiplayer overview. Uh, this one is Behemoth, which uh, I guess was a big team map? Unless we only saw one big team map and it was like the Valhalla looking one. Um, but there was a lot of vehicle stuff that we saw on this map. Uh, obviously, there's vehicle stuff going on in this in this screenshot. So, And it's called Behemoth. So I'm assuming it's a big team map, but it, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but all these maps, if you just look at the colors and all this map, this one in particular, look at the palm trees, look at everything, man. It's just so pretty. Everything's popping. This map, uh, sort of reminiscent of, I think this is this is the other big team one, because I think uh, this pelican was like dropping off stuff uh, for like the ordnance drops. It was dropping off like a vehicle or whatever. This one seems uh, very reminiscent of uh, Ragnarok from Halo 4 or Valhalla or you know whatever version of that uh, which is very cool um, and then this is the sort of Fathom Plaza looking map that we've seen several times now Recharge so we, so the, this one's Behemoth this one's Fragmentation Recharge and then down here we've got Live Fire which is this a map or is this like a Instructors at the Avery J. Johnson uh, Academy of Military Science ensure their Spartans prepared for any challenge the hostile galaxy throws at them. Cool. And then Bizarre. This map looks really cool. This looks like a map straight out of like... I don't know, bro. This looks like a cool map. Like, uh, I've heard... Uh, I know Cole was saying I, I think this map looks like turf. Uh, I don't know. This looks like sort of a mixture and almost like a map out of COD, which... Uh, don't I know some people might be tripping when they hear me say that but that's not a bad thing uh, This map's definitely very attractive and look it all looks very good and it all looks I mean just looking at these screenshots and everything compared to uh, Like the gameplay footage that we got a year ago uh, With like the campaign trailer uh, just looks night and day this stuff just looks way better especially down here We've got some additional stuff um, screenshots and then uh, some additional artwork and stuff for MCC uh, I think is down there but overall, uh, I just wanted to sort of run through this uh, in general, like I said. Uh, I'm not the best when it comes to this kind of stuff, and we're definitely not lore guys. But uh, just wanted to sort of run through this stuff. And let me know if y'all would be interested in me doing uh, rundowns on the blog posts as they come out. Uh, if you guys are curious about this sort of stuff. I love to just sit and talk about Halo uh, and sort of theorize about stuff and, you know, you know think about where stuff could be going and, and, and all that stuff. And I, I find it all very interesting. So if you guys are interested, let me know uh, how y'all are feeling about this in the comments. And maybe we'll do it for additional blog posts coming up, different news stuff. I'm not going to get too tryhardy into the news stuff. But uh, we can definitely talk about some Halo Infinite because I think it is a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for us here today. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed, like I said, me running down uh, the blog post and talking about it and stuff. Uh, and like I said, if you guys want some additional uh, in-depth uh, thoughts about the Infinite Multiplayer Overview, go check out our podcast. We talk all about uh, being able to pick up, uh, you know, the power-ups and not being able to activate them right after you pick them up. And, you know, being able to swing around with the grapple and people how people are going to be making Spider-Man custom games in Infinite and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we do a deep dive on all that stuff and, and, and talk about everything. 
So if you guys are interested, like I said, go check that out. Link in the description as well as for this blog post. Uh, and also, uh, get after me. Uh, just let me know in general how y'all are doing and, and hit me up. Uh, links are in the description for all my socials as well. Twitch, Twitter, uh, Discord, uh, Instagram, all that stuff. Hit me up. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Much love, much respect. As always, stay tuned.